If you're starting out hydroponics at home, you may think that you need to go buy some really expensive nutrients from a hydroponics store. Well, that simply is not true. I'm going to share with you the secrets that the companies selling expensive nutrients don't want you to know. Greensandmachines.com I've been doing hydroponics for a few years now and I've used the blend I'm about to share with you in one form or another through all my different systems that I've run. I've had success with this nutrient blend for methods like the crack key method, deep water culture, and nutrient film technique systems. First though, I'm going to share a little biology lesson. According to this plant physiology book I have here, plants need three main nutrients for growth, which I will refer to as macronutrients. Plants also need a variety of other nutrients to support their cellular functions, and I'll refer to those as micronutrients. The three main macronutrients are nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Nearly all off-the-shelf fertilizers will have these listed as an NPK rating on the packaging. There are a few other important macronutrients, but of those we are only going to discuss calcium, magnesium, and sulfur. To give a quick summary of what each of these nutrients does and what an abundance and or a deficiency of each looks like, let's dive into it. Nitrogen derived in the forms of nitrate or ammonium ions, is used for the development of all cellular parts of the plant. Nitrogen deficiency in plants will show up as slow or stunted growth and yellowing of the leaves. Deficiency also stimulates flower growth. An abundance of nitrogen stimulates leaf growth and delays flowering. Phosphorus, mainly derived from phosphates, the phosphate ion, plays an important role in the photosynthesis and plant metabolism. Deficiencies of phosphorus make the plants appear an intense green or can make shoots appear purple. Abundant phosphorus stimulates root growth and flowering. Potassium, derived from ionic potassium metal ions, regulates plant cell osmosis and activates enzymes. Deficiencies appear in older leaves as they will develop molting or chlorosis. Stems may also be weakened, causing plants to fall over. Calcium, derived from the metal ion calcium 2+, is used by plants for cellular division. Deficiencies include new growth being underdeveloped or deformed or discolored. Sulfur, derived from sulfate ions, is structural in proteins, coenzymes, and vitamins in the cells. Sulfur deficiencies will appear in new growth, but it is rare to see this due to the presence of fossil fuel emissions in the atmosphere. Magnesium, derived from the metallic ion, is part of the chlorophyll molecule. Deficiencies appear as chlorosis in the leaves. Okay, that's enough of a biology lesson for now. The secret with these nutrients is that they all can be purchased off the shelf from your local gardening store in forms that you wouldn't readily expect. And remember, plants don't really care where they get their nutrients from, provided that they are presented to the plant in a form that they can take up. Let's look at some items. For the source of our main macronutrients and a lot of the micronutrients, we will start with a base fertilizer. All the big box brand water-soluble fertilizers contain the right balance of these nutrients, including the trace micronutrients for plant growth, when combined with both water and soil. Since our medium of growth in hydroponics is not soil, we will have to add some other nutrients to it. This box does not contain magnesium, sulfur, or calcium, so we'll have to source those from elsewhere. Each of these fertilizers has a different rating of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium on each. I've tested quite a few different flavors of water-soluble fertilizer, namely miracle Girl All-Purpose with a rating of 24816, the miracle Grow Tomato Blend at 181821, and an off-brand fertilizer equivalent to miracle Grow's Bloom Booster of 153015. Now usually for your leafy greens like all the lettuce, basil, kale, and Swiss chard, you would think that you'd want more nitrogen-heavy fertilizer as it encourages leaf growth, the all-purpose fertilizer. I found quite the opposite. The 153015 fertilizer, higher in phosphorus than nitrogen, worked much better for growing my plants. The tomato fertilizer also worked okay, but I haven't had as much success using that one compared to the Bloom Booster in my hydroponic gardens. For each gallon of water in your system, add half a tablespoon of this fertilizer. The easiest and cheapest source of magnesium and sulfur for your garden is in Epsom salt, or magnesium sulfate. This is sold in many garden and drug stores and it is incredibly cheap. For each gallon of water, add in a quarter tablespoon of Epsom salt. Finally, for calcium, depending on where you live, you may not even need to add any additional calcium to your water. Have a look at your district's water supply report. 
If it is above 25 parts per million of calcium ions in the water, you're typically good to go. If it is not that high, then you will have to supplement it. I ran into this problem when I started hydroponic gardening after moving to my new house. The water supply in my new town is not nearly as hard as my old residence, so I needed a way to boost the calcium in the water. Disclaimer, this part is for entertainment purposes only. Attempt any chemistry experiment at your own risk. Study all the safety data sheets and wear appropriate personal protective equipment when handling chemicals. Putting my college degree to work, I decided to crack some eggs. Literally. Eggshells are composed mostly of calcium in the form of calcium carbonate. Now, although calcium carbonate is not water soluble, it will readily dissolve in acid. The two cheapest and safest acids that are food safe for working with your garden are citric acid derived from lemon juice, or acetic acid from vinegar. Neither the citrate ion nor acetate ions will harm your plant in any way, so both are good choices for this chemistry work. I've only experimented using vinegar so far as that's what I had on hand at the time. Let's do some chemistry. First, wash off those eggshells and dry them off. Fill up a container with some vinegar and add the eggshells. You'll notice that the vinegar will start to bubble and fizz a bit. This is because the acid is breaking down the bonds between the calcium ions and carbonate ions to form calcium acetate and carbonic acid. When carbonic acid is formed, it instantly decomposes to form water and carbon dioxide. This reaction also causes the solution to lose acidity, so adding this into your reservoir won't throw the pH off in an extreme way. That's pretty cool. You'll want to stir this mixture a bit and allow it to sit for a few hours, up to a day, even longer. Since we are adding eggshells in excess, there will be some shell and membrane material left over that we will filter off. After we filter off those solids, we are left with a somewhat murky solution of calcium acetate. Now you could go the distance and isolate this in solid form, but for our purposes in gardening, it is better to leave it already in liquid form. With this solution concentrating, if you need to bump up the calcium concentration in your water, half a teaspoon of the solution per gallon should do the trick. Better living through chemistry. So that's how I make my fertilizer blend. All the photos you've seen throughout this video should be enough evidence to show you that it works. Give this blend a go and see how it does in your garden.